So the Transformer 1 trailer has dropped, and while I could do just a straight up review of what I see, instead I figured why don't we dive into all the Easter eggs that are seen in this trailer meticulously through it all. Once again, spoiler warnings. This might be spoilers for the movie because we're going through everything frame by frame. But let's get into it like we always do here on the Transformer Slag Podcast and jump into this trailer and all of its little behind the scenes Easter eggs and little goodies. So... The trailer opens up with Orion Pax and D-16, Optimus Prime and Megatron, before they were, they were. And uh, we're introduced to a bot here that kind of looks like the double power master, double dealer. I mean, not confirmed, but he definitely gives me that vibe with the coloring and the shape. Uh, after that, we're obviously introduced to B-127, a.k.a. Bumblebee, and then we're off to the races. Uh, we clearly got a shot of a much later Orion Pax, now is Optimus Prime with the Matrix of Leadership, kind of showing what is going to be these characters later on. We're going to have a little bit of that too with a certain Decepticon Emperor of Destruction. We get this uh, city shot of Cybertron, and uh, we got some Cybertronian all over here, and the bigger building translates to Hal's Bar, and then there's a little uh, sign on the bottom right that says Minor, this is probably where all the miners and the workers go to hang out and stuff. It's not McAdams Bar, but it's close enough. Uh, we then get a shot of uh, pretty much when Orion is talking to Megatron, we see a glowing ad in the background of the Iacon 5000. So the Iacon 5000 in Transformers lore was this top-tier Cybertronian motorsport race that was like lightly mentioned in the Transformers G1 UK comic books in the letter pages, and it featured jazz and drag strips. So nice little throwback there many years ago, decades ago. Uh, we get a shot of D16 at what he will become one day, which is obviously Megatron, the Emperor of Destruction. So again, tying to that. And then we see this freshly dropped hot branding iron of the Decepticon emblem. No, no doubt like moments after he truly makes himself a Decepticon and founds that whole organization and just the madness of that. Uh, we also see D-16 looking at an ancient Cybertronian. This uh, ancient Cybertronian has a Decepticon-looking face emblem. Uh, this is not Tarn. I doubt it. it's Tarn, but uh, maybe it's Megatronus Prime, where Megatron would take his name from, but we don't know yet, but we will see. We get a shot of a giant purple ship. This could be potentially the an early version of Megatron's iconic ship, the Nemesis, but time will tell. Uh, in the jetpack scene, we see D-16 already sporting that Decepticon emblem on his right arm, so maybe it was something he scribbled on there in his early planning of the future. Also in the background, it's either a gladiator pit, which Megatron originated from, from his past, or that same Iacon 5000 that we talked about before, so... That's probably how they escape to the surface. Uh, we see some Cybertronian wildlife. Now, this isn't Petra rabbits. These are more deer-like, but they also might be similar to the titanium moose bots that uh, Sideswipe talked about in the early G1 cartoon. Uh, now, in this version of the story, each Cybertronian has an exposed hole in their chest where their transformation cog would belong. And uh, it's what gives them their transformation. That's kind of how it's sold in here. And that's how we meet the ancient Cybertronian Alpha Trion, one of the original 13 Transformers, voiced by Lawrence Fishburne. And he gifts each one of them the transformation cog since they are worthy. The transformation cog, of course, is something that debuted in uh, Generation 1 Season 3 back in 1986 and was a key part of Transformers being able to transform and they keep the general shape and form of that old design, so that's pretty cool. Um, at that point, then our characters kind of get our base bodies of uh, what I think the toys will all be based on pretty much and the ability to transform. Uh, Orion Pax losing his head when he's transforming is a nod to the old G1 toy and how the transformation, big part of it, was tucking in Optimus Prime's head right under to be part of that transformation. We are shown uh, the invasion of the Quintessons to Cybertron and how they will take over and try to turn it into war factories and en enslave the Cybertronian race. We get what I assume is our very first look at Sentinel Prime, who will be voiced by John Hamm. Uh, he's the current leader of the Autobots and the carrier of the Matrix of Leadership. 
Uh, they seem to be using an amalgam of his Transformers animated blue kind of look by Derek Wyatt, along with a little bit of the Activision, Activision War for Cybertron video games. And it's kind of a mix of the two, and that's what the final design seems to be made from, uh, instead of his more like orangey-yellow Generation 1 kind of look. And of course, a complete departure from his red design from the movie all that time. Um, we also get a look at the Quince subduing him, and that's probably how the Matrix of Leadership gets freed up, I'm going to imagine. Um, we get some kind of spider bot shown here, Tarantulas, maybe it's Black, uh, Black Arachnia or an arachnid female character. Maybe it's a Quintesson goon that has some kind of organic element to them. We don't know, but we'll see what happens with that. I get a feeling the Quintessons are going to be the big bad in this movie, of course. And the next shot we get are some bots that we do know. And uh, this is our very first look at the movie of Transformers 1 of Soundwave, Shockwave, and Starscream, the heavy hitters of the Decepticons outside of Megatron. In front of them, of course, excuse me, in behind them, of course, is uh, Megatron's iconic throne, which means they're probably on the Nemesis ship where this shot is being taken from. Uh, we also get a quick shot of some kind of beast-like bot attacking another one. It's probably not Grimlock, but I'm imagining it's maybe some Sharkticons that the Quintessons brought over. It has a little bit of pink and uh, purple and green elements to them, so kind of similar to that, I would imagine. So it's probably a Sharkticon or some kind of beast that the Quints brought. Uh, we also see for a quick moment a purple and blue familiar colored jet that transforms and fights. It could be the female Seeker Slipstream. Uh, we also see B-127 AK Bumblebee's Battle Mask in this ongoing nod to his original G1 toy, how while in the show he had a cartoon, you know, normal face, but his toy had a kind of battle mask going on, and that's a throwback to that. His knife hands, as the trailer refers to it as, are his stingers that have something that become a part of this character throughout the years uh, through different designs and effects and everything, and of course made its debut in Transformers Animated in 2008. And staying true to that transformation of the character's history, here is yet again his little stingers. Um, speaking of transformations, let's talk about the alt modes. So Orion Pax, of course, has something that's a Cybertronian flat-nosed truck, throwing back to, of course, his original G1 Optimus Prime look. Bumblebee has something that's very in line with his B-127 Cybertronian car mode that he had in the Bumblebee movie in the opening scene. Uh, Alita 1 or Ariel, I don't know which name they're going with, I'm going to assume Alita 1, um, is some kind of Cybertronian bike. Now, the character originally was not like that, but as they started doing the movie stuff in 2007, Alita 1 started getting more of these different kind of alt modes, and one of them was some kind of bike. She's had two figures up to this point that turn into some kind of Cybertronian bike or just some kind of motorcycle, so continuing that tradition. And we don't have a shot yet of D16, a.k.a. Megatron's alt mode, but if I was a betting man, it's probably something with a big gun, be it a tank or a cannon or something. We will see. But that's it more or less for uh, all the little Easter eggs with this uh, trailer. Hope you learned something, and uh, we're definitely going to be probably doing some other talk today, tomorrow, and everything like that about Transformers 1. It's going to be a loaded next couple of days. We got some toy reveals and much more to cover today. So stay tuned here on the Transformer Slag Podcast. And as always, thank you for listening.